Welcome to the show. We hope you have a blast. Thanks for making time for the Dealer Talk Podcast. Another business leader, here's a penny for your thoughts. This ain't a regular conversation, baby. This that Dealer Talk. What up? Welcome to another episode of the Dealer Talk Podcast. This is your host, Herb Anderson. Thank you so much for tuning in. I have my very good friends, Mr. Ben Cooper and Mr. Ross Good from across the pond. We're going to be having a great conversation. Gentlemen, what's up? How are you? Oh, yeah, Ben. Nice to see you. Hello. Likewise. Good to see you guys. I'm glad to have this opportunity to chat with you. Um, so what's up guys I, I kick things off with a with kind of a background so tell us about about you uh i'll jump in uh my name is ben cooper i head up Holt uh, automotive recruitment so we recruit uh, over in the uk or we started 13 or 14 years ago in the uk recruiting across the automotive industry uh, mainly across dealership and retail recruitment uh, over the last few years, uh, a lot of our clients have been asking us if we'll help them out in the States. Uh, so Ross, who worked on a different team at the time, jumped across and started heading up the US division. Uh, and that's how we came came across your podcast and you. And I'll let Ross, Ross introduce himself as well. Yeah, um, been in recruitment for five years, uh, all with Holt. And I said, yeah, worked on the UK market within uh, dealership. Um, and then got given the great opportunity to work in in the states, and um, yeah, loving it. And and you know, thanks very much for letting us be a part of the podcast today. Yeah, absolutely. So, Ross, you're here in the states now, or or you just manage that from afar? No, well, at the moment, due to of course uh, the ongoing pandemic, we are based uh, in the UK, um, but frequently come over to the states on on visits and. and uh, and this day and age, working remotely and doing everything video and, uh, of course, telephone helps. But in the UK at the moment, yeah. Right on, man. I love the matching gear, by the way, guys. So <laughs> very cool. Thank you very much. Yeah. Couldn't decide what to wear. So we thought, yeah. if in doubt, wear some branding. Yeah, right on, man. Um, so <laughs> you mentioned the pandemic. So let's start there, right? That seems to be the the... the the focus point of a lot of our sessions these days. So how's that, how's that whole thing impacted what you guys do? Uh, truthfully, it's in the UK, really difficult. Uh, we've had multiple lockdowns. We're in lockdown number three at the moment. Uh, made it very wow. difficult to do anything. Yeah, very different to over there. We can't, we can't do anything outside. So you can go to work if you have to, but apart from that is stay inside. So go and do your shopping. Uh, the US team, Ross's team, absolutely thriving. I mean, the pandemic's bad over there, but we're not. The, the rules aren't quite as strict. Uh, so yeah, the, there's been a lot of backing from our end to to get going on the US stuff because it's more open than here. So yeah, Ross probably for you and a bit better, but there's lots more going on on your side of the pond. Uh, were you yeah, expecting that, that, Ross? And, when uh, I think. Um... When... Yeah, I, I think like all of us, we didn't know what to expect. Right. I think yeah. we, um, you know, we every day, especially you know, last March when it really got to a point where nobody knew what was going on. We, like many trades, yourself, many industries were just dated. But I think did um, is things like into the uh, face to face for some is a no obvious reasons. Um, so the sort of increase in video and telephone interviews has gone up. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, as Ben states, it's, uh, it's going well in the U had its sort of peaks, um, but hopefully getting there now, which is good. Right. And did you, um, so how does it, how does it contrast with what you got with, with, um, with the uk market is it uh, you know i think considerably slowed down over there yeah i would have said so we're probably yeah 30 or 40 percent of uh, of where we would be in a normal january uh wow. yeah it's slowed down one obviously no one can go to to guard car dealerships to buy cars so everything has to be done over the internet you can go and pick up your car so service centers are still open but anything body shop anything that like MOT or, or, or technician wise is pretty slow at the moment. So yeah, it slowed down significantly. You, you expect to have a bit of a lull normally in December 
and January comes back and everyone's happy and looking for a new job. But yeah, we've got another six weeks, seven weeks of lockdown. So everyone's sort of biding their time until then. And given the extensions, it just, yeah, keeps on, keeps, keeps on sort of pushing it down the road. Um, yeah. So it's, it's difficult in the UK at the moment, um, which is why we're putting more emphasis on the U S team. Although that doesn't, that, that doesn't mean there's no challenges with the U S team, obviously trying to get a technician to, yeah to to download zoom on their phone to have an interview as opposed to going down to the down to the, the the dealership is is challenging sometimes but it's it's working more than it is in the uk sure no i can i can imagine um I, i'm curious because um like to your guys's point like it hasn't impacted us in that way like with full lockdowns and things of that nature um, I mean, I'm consulting with dealers right now that they haven't had to shut once, not either side of the of the house, right, front or back. Yeah. Um, what has that done for purchases online in your market? I mean, are you guys got that process down tight across no. the dealerships, or is it just figuring it out? You, you guys, it's especially on the east coast. There's a lot more internet sales managers. There's a lot more internet sales. Um, I think if you look in the UK, we're probably two or three years behind you in, in the internet and online sales. Um, so it, we just weren't prepared for it, I would Probably say. Longer, uh, yeah, maybe longer. Um, over the last probably yeah, month, 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 month and a half, we've probably seen more sales people being hired again. So we're starting to almost accelerate the, the hiring and the, the buying of cars online. But it's we're, we're way behind where you guys are in that in that respect. Um, I think a big part of the dealerships and a lot of the big groups have a, like a strong internet sales team already, and we just don't have that that in the UK at all. What do you mean? So the 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 process is strictly um, in 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 house. You know, you go to the dealership to purchase. Is that is that kind of like the way it's it's been done? Yeah, much more so than it is out in the states. Um, yeah, you do have obviously online purchases, but it's much more dealership focus so as soon as the dealership shut and because they shut so suddenly there was no transition to, to right online purchases it just literally overnight it was okay you can't go out of your houses uh and then there was probably this 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 period in in september october where they where they opened again but that six weeks eight weeks of them being open at the back end of the summer wasn't enough to get everything set up and we thought the world was back to normal so everyone hired sales people everyone got everything ready in the dealerships and then shut again so there almost wasn't enough time to prepare for the, the second and then third waves that we've been going through. Um, so it's just seriously hit it. Um, I would say if there was to be a fourth lockdown or this carried on for another year, we're, we're in a better position now. But you guys were, like I said, probably a year or two ahead in, in terms of online sales. Yeah. And Ross, when you taking over the, 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 the States, right, the United States market, were you... Um were you able to handle that? You know what I mean? Because of the the difference in kind of the the, the online setup over here. Yeah, definitely. I think, as Ben said, it's very old fashioned in the UK. Uh, the face to face is a lot greater, and you know we are a little bit behind. But with the US market, yeah, there's more potential. Obviously, you know, people can have more of a choice, be it internet, be it face to face sales. So yeah, I think with it, it's definitely we've got a, a very big pool of candidates. So the choice is greater uh, than it would be in the UK, and um, I think we found that definitely, you know, since last year. Yeah, it's really interesting to me, man, because I was one of those that, um, you know, I still am. Like I, I hear that these whole. Uh, you know, people talk about like, oh, you know, not the industry is forever changed and, and all these things. And I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant. Um, I don't see, and I, you know, it's not like I'm, you know, in every single dealership, but you know, I get, I have a good sample size and I just don't see the push even now for that full online experience. I mean, there's no question that customers want to do more online before they come into the dealership, but they still want to have that in-person experience. How long that's going to last, you know, that's that's to be determined. But um, it's interesting to me the position that you guys are in where, um, you know, this happens all of a sudden, you're not prepared, um, and then you got you have to adjust. But at the same time, that that shutdown period, I think, is 
there's a lot of value in that, man, you know, because that's a that's a reset time for a dealership to be like, okay, we have the situation instead of just kind of rushing through it. Um, it it's been, it's it's a good opportunity to kind of reassess and, and kind of come up with some strategies or, you know, reinvent the process, if you will. Is that happening? Are you guys seeing that? Are you seeing that dealers are, although they're shut down, they're kind of working behind the scenes to get this thing rolling and in place so that they can really, you know, kind of master it and, and be better yeah. at it. Yeah, absolutely. There's been a big shift. There's a, there's a shift in, yeah, there's a shift in staff for number one. So some of the, the, the dealerships have got out for want of a better phrase, like the dead wood and they've started to transition to, to yeah, a different and more forward thinking staff and management team. Um, but yeah, there's definitely been a, a shift uh, in, in the way that people are thinking, the way people are approaching it. Uh, I mean, people don't know if and when dealerships are going to be open again. Right. They still have to sell the cars. They still have to fix people's cars. They still have to do everything. So there's a shift to everything, even if it's online booking systems and yeah, uh, people being more available, online chats, uh, like chatbots being available on websites, things like that, little things that probably were in the pipeline of companies like uh, back office but weren't ready yet and they've just pushed forward. Um, so yeah, people are always going to want to collect their car. People are always going to want to test drive. Um, but there are more and more people doing 80% of it online before they go into store as opposed to 80% in store and just having a look at where that store is online. Yeah. I kind of wish that we had that transitional period here in the States for longer. Oh. I think that we adjusted maybe a little bit too quick and we didn't really take advantage fully of that, of that opportunity. Like, listen, I, I don't want to sound, um, I don't know if cynical is the right word, but you know, like I, I know that, you know, we were in a better position than most because, you know, a lot of people didn't lose their jobs and weren't laid off and were able to continue to work, mm -hmm. um, you know, so that's obviously that, that was that was a good thing. But I also felt like that was a that 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 transition time would would have been ideal for dealers to kind of put pause, reset and um, kind of, um you know, come up with a better way to, to, to service their customers, digitally speaking. Again, I'm not a big believer that, that a lot of customers want to have, want to completely buy their cars online. I don't think that the, 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 the numbers support it, but um, it's the future. There's no question about that. That's where we're ultimately going, you know, we're heading in that direction. So if we can create that environment now, while we have this opportunity, I think that everybody's going to be better for it. And, and, for, and I think here it's been, they've done probably too good of a job where it's it's been they've been able to kind of a, a adjust to all that stuff really quickly so i don't know ross what are you seeing man from your end you having the both perspectives right you being over there seeing it and living it and then dealing with with people here in the u.s and kind of connecting those those two well uh, a big difference and not saying it doesn't happen in the uk but with the sales consultants, the online branding and to, to quote what we say a lot is the brand within the brand. Mm. So I think since it's all changed, what I'm seeing and maybe itself as well on social media is a lot of these sales consultants are really kind of going the extra mile to brand themselves. And I think that presence is is very powerful. It's definitely on the platforms that we use. Um, so that's a, a definite increase. This is what's happened um you know the the daily videos from lots of sales consultants to really use the online presence has been has been fantastic to be honest and that's much more in the states than the uk at present you know what you you mentioned video and that's a good one um and, and I, I love to get both of your perspectives ben because you're there you know um in the uk and ross obviously because your exposure here but um and this is this is directly now going into HR, but ha is this a good opportunity to um, incorporate more um, um, digital, uh, what's the word, skills during the interview process? Like, you know, are you, are, you know, like, is this a good time to ask candidates? Are you willing to be on video? Um, you know, do you mind using Zoom to conduct a deal? Um, are you willing to go on your phone and talk to your customer and have that that video experience? There's been and has to be a huge shift with it. I think I think the one thing to note here is 
clients and dealerships have to be careful in not just adding extra processes for the sake of adding extra processes in the interview processes and just having, okay, we can't meet you this week, so we'll do a Zoom call and then we're going to meet you instead of just meeting you and elongating and dragging out processes. So I think customers and clients have got to be careful with that because that has been happening a bit. Um, but for sure, right, the future is going to be Microsoft Teams and Zoom and video calling your customers and and like Ross said, branding yourself as a sales consultant and, and getting your personal brand out there, not just not just your dealership's brands. Uh, so absolutely, it needs to be incorporated and used as part of the process. And you need to be able to see what people can do. Uh, long, long, are the, long gone are the days where you shake someone's hand and you sell them a car and you upsell them. It's, it's more about what you can do digitally now than ever. So it's it's, it's going to become the, the younger sales consultants coming through will actually absolutely be tested on that. Um, and if you've been a sales consultant for the last 20, 25 years, it's probably time to, to get some sort of refresher and, and sort of pick up some of the newer techniques. But so what do you do with the guys that, that, that don't, that don't adjust, that are, are reluctant? Uh, over here, they, they've almost been forced to because they're, it's slightly different. And Ross will probably jump in on that later, but they've, they've been forced to because it's the only way they can work at the moment. Uh, as in, they, so they can't see people, so they have to. Um, so dealerships are spending a lot of money on training people and teaching people and new platforms, whether that's their own video platforms, whether that's Zoom, whatever it is, they are putting them through training programs. They just, they haven't got a choice because everything's shut. Um, so that that is slightly different to probably you guys over there because what else can we do? It's the only way we can, we can, we can run business at the moment. Um, and luckily, we've got a, a wonderful furlough scheme in place, which means people's jobs are protected. Um, but as we come out of this, it's not just going to be, OK, the pandemic's over. Let's all just go back to normal. So companies are, are forcing and have been forced to, to show their hand and get everything ready. But Ross will probably have a slightly different view in the US there. Yeah, no, I'd love to get his take on that same question, too. So what, what are you seeing on your end, man? Yeah, I think, as, as Ben said, I think... Um, I think the ones who have been in the game longer, I think, you know, yes, leagues advancing all the time and the ones who are sort of much greener in the industry have been there five, ten years have always had that, always had it incorporated. But there's, you know, there's also still a very big market of the personable touch. And I think that's still very much there. So people want to visit dealerships to speak to people who've been there a long time who may not be averse to the digital world um so yeah i think they have to adapt of course but there still is that split that people want to go out and meet maybe the sales woman that had or seen many years before and, and still go and meet them uh which of course has slowed slowed it down um but i think although yeah digitally it's it's taken over there still is that gap in the market for the the personable touch as i said Right on, man. So here's a question that I've been, I, I've, so I've had a couple of people um, in the HR realm uh, do sessions with me this year because for obvious reasons, right? Because of the pandemic and all that. But I haven't asked this question. And when I connect with you, Ross, and I was thinking about, you know, some of the things that we could cover or that we could kind of bring to this discussion, this question was top of mind for me. And that is where, you know, what, what would you say? What's the advice we give decision makers under these circumstances? Because whether you, you have the situation that you guys have over there in the UK or the situation we have here in the US, the one thing that connects us all is that things are different, man, no matter how you look at it. So um, hiring, you can't hire like you used to hire. So everybody talks about how this impacted the buying online experience, the service department, but what about the way that we build our teams? Like what's different and more importantly, what, what should we be doing as, as, as decision makers within the dealership to accommodate for, for the situation? Uh, from, from, from my side, so the biggest mistake people made at the start of this pandemic is they just froze. Uh, nothing moved, nothing changed. Uh, like hiring almost came to a standstill, uh, but the requirements were still there. Um, so the, the the first thing is people need to change the way they hire, the way they find staff. Um, it's not going to be as easy as it was before. Um, there's probably a bigger need for people like Ross and me and our teams because uh, people are probably a, a bit more scared to move on and, and find new things. But the world is going to keep on turning. Um, so sure. it, it's very, very important that companies don't, the companies keep up with demand and they keep 
keep hiring and keep finding the right staff. I think that the need for staff is always going to be there, but it might be slightly different going forward. You're probably going to need a slightly different skill set, whether that's sales or technicians or whether that's back office. I think dealerships are going to change in the way that they run slowly. Um, so you'll probably need a slightly different different type of person. Um, but yeah, I think that the, the biggest thing we had over here in the UK and across Europe and, and some of it in the US are that as soon as this happened, everything just froze for, for a couple of months and, and they've been playing catch up ever since seemingly. Yeah. Ross, would you add anything to that? Yeah, I think, um, as Ben said, but also I think behaviorally from, from clients is, you know, even before the pandemic, the um, going online, look on job boards, and of course we all know the job boards out there, you know, you get a similar pool of, of candidates from these job boards. So people like us, uh, headhunters, recruiters, whatever you may call it, we on a daily basis we build relationships with people so we've got candidates and, and people we speak to who may not be active but passive um so i think changing the behavior of of maybe not always going on the same similar job boards to dealing with teams who deal with candidates is something that can be changed and that's a value in that because you're getting you're getting fresh candidates who may not be on job boards who may be on other other avenues other resources insights that we can speak to and do speak to so yeah that's what the biggest change for me would would be now let me ask you this is there is there a skill that you guys have identified that um you know is a good predictor of of performance in this new way of, of conducting business sort so to so to speak and i'm not talking about the pandemic it, by itself i'm talking about the, the the digital world right social media um video technology basically is there a skill set that you guys have identified that translates well that's a good predictor um that decision makers that are tuning in can can kind of uh you know uh you know be looking for that that is something that that they would need that that kind of showcases that this person is gonna is gonna do well. Uh, a, a big thing is just a, ability to come across well on video. Uh, so I, I guess us in the background, it, it's not natural for everyone. It's not natural, probably even for Ross and me to be on your podcast right now. We're used to being on the phone with people all day. So it's it's not natural to do things like this. And it's it's the people that come across the same way on video and over the, this new age as they do in person. Um, I think from an HR and a hiring perspective, it's important to realize that when you're speaking to people, it might well be the first time that, that they're, they're picking up, they've, they've downloaded Zoom that day or they, they're using WhatsApp video or whatever it is, it's probably the, it might well be the first time they've done it. So there's a, as much a skill in, in teaching candidates and, and us as in the background prepping candidates and teaching them and showing them how to come across well on these videos as it is that we need to we need to train and teach the hiring managers to to make feel make people feel comfortable but also just to to, to teach them and show them that it, it's not always going to be exactly the same over video um, trends and people are going to be changing so it's what what they can look out for in people's personalities are they are they being honest are they coming across well are they they might not they might be they might have a bad internet connection but are they being are they coming across in an articulate way are they coming across are they are they speaking as they would in person are they like telling the truth are they are they as good as they say they are and it's very easy when you meet someone in person you can look them in the eyes but it's very difficult to, to judge that over a video call that might be a bit jittery yeah but you almost have to now right because it, i don't care if you're in the car business or whatever business yes. i think that you know you're hiring in, in today's environment you're probably doing a bunch of zooms yeah. so if you have an issue with being on camera if, if that kind of stuff um intimidates you you're gonna have a harder time right so you might as well just kind of accept it and uh start doing as many videos as you possibly can be doing because the more you do it the more comfortable you're gonna get with it and that's just gonna translate better right so sure. i don't know that's just that's my thought but yeah, it is. And, and us in the background, we're yeah. constantly, constantly video calling. I think uh, Ross Ross had it earlier today, actually, if I remember rightly, it was today. Uh, a candidate, uh, I think, was due to have a face-to-face -face interview. They last minute said, no, can we do it over Zoom? And it's it's a technician who's been in the trade for a little while, not, not used to that. So from our end, in that background, Ross has already been on a video call to him. Ross has, instead of just having phone calls with him, he's made sure he's downloaded everything, he's prepped him, he's gone through it, he's gone through his CV over video. So 
it's almost he's having a second run at it. He's having a third run at it. It's not the first time he's 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 on that camera in front of the client. And at the same time, we've spoken to the client and said, look, this is this is probably his first time speaking to a client. He'll be a bit nervous. Just give him some time. It probably won't come across as well as he would face to face. So as middlemen, as HR, as recruiters, it's very, very important that we deliver this message both ways. Um, right. Ross probably has a bit of insight there because I think it was your candidate, Ross, today. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I think, um, and yeah, you're right, Herbert, definitely. I think the only difference is, as Ben said, salespeople get exposed more to the digital world. Uh, technical people, for example, in our industry don't, as Ben said. So, yeah, that happened today. That's happened before. You know, um, although, yeah, you've got to get used to it. There's still that initial um, process where you've got to do it for the first time or maybe the second time. And there's no substitute for face-to-face. As, as we said but it is it, it's um it is you know can be vulnerable when you're at home and you're on a, on a video call so if we can do our best to help people um and as ben mentioned do a, a few prep calls a few prep video calls to get them comfortable then that's so so let me ask you because ben mentioned uh fear right and i and i like that i i, I want to tackle that because you know, I think that, and I think that, that this happens all the time, but I think um, sometimes we can lose great people because of that first impression, right? Because first impression fail or whatever. And now you add the, the I don't want to say challenge or obstacle, but you, you add the, the, the video element to it, which can be intimidating for some folks, right? Um, when you guys are interviewing people and you identify that, what, what, you know, what do you do to get them comfortable? And more importantly, for 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 decision makers again that are tuning in, what would you say to them about having those 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 meetings? And maybe that first impression was a little rocky, but it's not because the person lacks skill or talent. It's just maybe they're just uncomfortable with this way of of interacting. Yeah, get get them talking about themselves. Uh, who 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 can be uncomfortable when they're talking yeah. about themselves? I think you can tell, anyone can tell uh, uh, whether someone can, can do the job. I can tell within a couple of minutes from a CV if someone's good enough to do the job. But if, they, if they're not comfortable, they're going to come across badly in an interview. So if you get them talking about themselves, I think that's the, the, in, the, in the world that we live in and recruit in, a lot of managers aren't taught to interview. So they are, they're promoted from within, they move up in dealerships, and then it's all of a sudden they have to interview people. And there's no, there's no training on their end about how to get people to, to interview properly, how to assess people proper, properly. Uh, it's easy enough to tick a box on a technician and say, you can do the job, but are you the right person to, to come into our, to our dealership? Well, it's pretty hard to tell over a 20 minute Zoom call, but if you have 15 minutes of them talking about themselves and, and them becoming completely comfortable, then the next 10 minutes that, that you're assessing their personality is better than just a 10 minute call assessing their personality without them being comfortable. So anyone is happy to talk about themselves. I think the biggest problem with interviews and particularly Zoom and, and Microsoft Teams interviews are that people just go straight into it and, and it's very difficult to know how someone's feeling to get someone completely comfortable. Whereas in a normal interview process, you'd sit down, you'd make them a cup of tea, you'd have a chat in and out of the room, you'd probably have a second person sat in there, they'd become more comfortable. On a Zoom call, it's right hello straight into it so make someone feel at ease and you'll find out the real person go straight into some technical questions and some tough questions about how many cars they've sold and you'll probably get their back up a little bit ross what about you man here in the uh, for for your us um clients like how do you what do you do to to get them more comfortable or ready for that for that for that first meeting you know perhaps their very first meeting ever via video Uh, I think, yeah, yeah um, uh, first of all, initially lead the conversation. So explain, you know, the process. Um, and as Ben said, let them open up. Because sometimes I think in this industry, in recruitment, um, the emphasis is put on the, the recruiter or the client. You know, it's important to go in and press, and press, and press. But equally, it's important for the client to, you know, show why they are the best place to work for, for this person. So it's it's really important for you know speaking to these people to give them time to talk and not not butt in not lead the call let them so by the end of it good recruiters will pick out you know if they are nervous about seeing if they're holding back on something 
Um, but it all comes from from them being able to express themselves. Yeah, no, I love that. I, I love. I see. That's the that's the one thing that that I do like about the video portion of it because I think video is the quickest way to break the ice. Um, you know, it's better. It's definitely better than an email. Definitely better than a phone. And with all the restrictions that we have today, um, I mean, I, there's some benefits, right? You can interview more people. Um, you can kind of gauge them before they ever, before you ever have that in-person interaction. And, um, you know, I think it, it bodes well if somebody does, if somebody's comfortable on camera during an interview process in the world that we live in today, they're, they're probably more likely to do those sorts of things in the position like do video, do social media, those sorts of those, especially if you're in sales, that those sorts of activities that, that are, that are business generating or that, that, um, are, well, I don't know if business generating is the right word because sometimes those things are hard to measure, but at least brand building, right? you you you, you can use those tools to build out your personal brand, which ultimately benefits the dealership that you're, that you're associated with. Uh, you guys have mentioned this a couple of times and I wanted to get your perspective on it because I think it's a, it's an interesting one that again, there's not there hasn't been a lot of talk, or I haven't I haven't seen it in, in, out there in the in social media and stuff. But how does this pandemic impact hiring um, uh, technicians, which you know was already a challenge, and now you t you throw this pandemic on top of that? Uh, what has that done for that for that side of the house? Uh, in the UK, it hasn't changed uh, it. Definitely. In the US, it has for Ross. Yeah, uh, I think, well, I think on, on both, to be honest, I think with, and I'm not saying this doesn't happen for sales, but definitely for technicians, um, the ones who are on a martyr tech level, who've got in the States ASC certifications, um, I know companies are probably um, doing their best to keep them. So, um, there is a certain level who may, you know, I've got a lot who may not be certified, uh, who may not have the state inspections license, um, but are very good technicians. So I think, yeah, there's there's probably less of those who have been certified than not. Um, because as I said, company have looked at this and thought we, we can't and, and they're trying to keep hold of it. Ben, what about you? You you mentioned uh, and it hasn't really changed in, in in your in your in your part of of the world. But let me expand on that. So when you say it hasn't changed, it hasn't changed because of the pandemic, or it hasn't changed because th there there isn't a, a tech a, a tech shortage like what we're seeing in the U.S. and and Canada. Uh, there's a big tech shortage, but it hasn't changed for years because the shortage has been here for for quite a while. I think the, uh, the biggest thing over the last. 12 months six months has been uh the hiring or taking more risks on your hiring uh hiring more junior people hiring people that are moving industry um but yeah there's definitely there, there's a there's a problem in the uk particularly because the the pay is not fantastic over here um and state by state in america varies but there's there's definitely a shortage of skilled technicians here and in europe um so people are just taking more risks with their hiring um, and that's only been uh, accelerated by covid but yeah it's definitely it's the same because the covid hasn't changed it there's there's just a, there's a shortage in technicians if you've got a good technician as a recruiter they can probably go to five or six places if not more um and anyone will snap your hand off for them um so much so that they probably don't even have an interview you can send a cv and they can just or send a resume and they can be there the next day it's just if you're a good technician you can you can work pretty much anywhere um the skill for us and difficulty for us is trying to find the ones that that will make good technicians or probably aren't quite there yet and trying to place them with companies that really need them. But will you make what, but doesn't that in essence create demand, which means they're, they'll be making more money. Uh, you would think, wouldn't you? The salary just don't go up there. A lot, a lot of the big groups are set in stone. Um, yeah, it's slightly different over here. I mean, we're salaried. Uh, a lot of the, the companies we work with in the US and Ross does is more a flat rate paid. Um, but over in the UK, it's salaried and bonus. Um, and, if they start to change it too much and create demand and increase the salaries, there's going to be a lot of, um, a lot of issues with the people that are already working. Um, so right. it, it's a very, very difficult and delicate question. If you bring, so if you're desperate for someone and you bring them on, on a, a few thousand dollars more than the person that came in last, there's going to be uproar in, in, in on site. So it's a really difficult one because they need them and they can get them if they just pay that bit more. 
Um, and we see that a lot more in the UK. People will people will move jobs for a small amount of money uh, or a shorter commute, whereas in the US, people are slightly more loyal than they are here. Well, and and uh, you know they've gotten they've gotten here a little creative with with the. Uh with scheduling, for example, one thing that's worked well with some of the stores that I consult with is the 410 schedule. Mm -hmm. So it gives, it gives those technicians more freedom, right? More time off, which is obviously it's a, you know, it's a great way to, to incentivize them beyond pay. I don't know, Ben, I mean, Ross, if you're seeing that on your end um, with, with candidates here in, in the US, but that seems to be something that I don't want to say it's a trend, but a lot of dealers are are definitely considering at least or or experimenting with it. Yeah, uh, it, it's definitely as you said, it's coming in. Um, there's a mix. Again, it's it's what's what people do. But uh, in the UK, for instance, as well, there's uh, the four on four off pattern as well. And there's different patterns, different things to give people more flexibility, time at home, social time. So yeah, it is definitely coming in, um, but there's still the the sort of other elements that are still there as well. But yeah, we're seeing lots of changes, um, and that is definitely one of them. Right on, yeah, man. The one thing, and I keep saying this, and I'm going to say it again, but the one thing that I like about about this whole situation that we're all in is that um, this has really accelerated progress in. Yeah. in the industry people are decision makers more than ever are, are not only being more creative but they're open to to experimenting right and that's going to ultimately lead, lead excuse me to some pretty um interesting changes in the industry so the next two to three years to me is going to be a good a good um um sign right of, of the impact the true impact of the situation because I think we're we're willing to try everything because the stuff that used to differentiate us doesn't anymore because everybody's kind of been forced to to do that. So um, I think anything that you can do within your specific market or within your specific brand that gives you a leg up, um, decision makers are going to be more willing to try that now more than ever. So yeah, um, that that rings true for our industry as well. Just to, just to jump in, obviously where we work in. In recruitment, uh, decision makers are much more willing to, to give us a go, particularly as we pick up the phone and we're English and suddenly there's an obstacle when you're speaking to US clients, but they're, they're happy to give us a go and work with us because if there's a demand and there's a change and if we can give them something they're not going to find elsewhere, um, we've definitely, and I know Ross's team has seen a massive increase the last 12 months of, of companies like, look, it might cost a bit more than your traditional searching for candidates on deed or word of mouth, but if you're going to impact and, and make a big difference to our dealerships, then absolutely we'll work with you. And, um, and yeah, we've seen uh, so many companies come coming to us now asking for our help and, and our word, our, our, our brand is being passed about um, because we're able to help dealerships long term. So it's, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's affecting our industry too. No, that's all. That's what I love about this whole thing, man. The progress part of it you know that's it's like i said there's going to be a lot of cool things that are going to come from this for sure mm -hmm. so we're getting close to that time um and there is a question that i ask everybody that comes to the show so i definitely want to ask you that looks like uh ross dropped off there but we'll see if he if he rejoins but yeah um w what is um i'm sorry the, the one thing i did want to want to uh cover before we got there is uh, about your company tell us about your company tell us how we can connect with you tell us you know what you guys do what's different about your your offering uh yeah truthfully let's do it for the us clients uh the uk market is quite saturated there's quite a few recruitment companies that do it it's 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 a different market to the us uh we've been running for 13 or 14 years i think 2007 in the same market right so we've worked with clients i think we work with over 100 of the top 150 dealer groups in the uk um so we've been doing this for a long long time we've got a database of 200 250,000 candidates uh if you've ever worked in the automotive industry you've probably heard of hot recruitment in the uk um in the us we're different right because there's not many one there's not many uk recruitment companies doing what we're doing but there's not too many recruitment companies um, but really, we saw it as a way that we could go over and add some value to, to, to companies that struggle to hire. Um, it's, it's, 
it's a very difficult thing to find technicians and sales consultants and sales managers that, that stay uh, uh, for a long time and add value to your to your brand and your dealership. Um, and we know that that with our database and our process that we can come over and have the same impact in the US that we had in the UK. Um, so predominantly working on the East Coast and then we'll be working our way across the US as the team grows. So to, the best person to reach out to is Ross. Uh, easiest place to reach out to him is on LinkedIn. Um, but yeah, his email is, is ross at holtrecruitment.com. Um, and he is the, the best person to speak to. Any advice, uh, anything you want to know, if you, even if you want to know what the salaries are like, what's coming up in the next couple of months, uh, we don't just find people jobs. We try and add value by telling them what's happening in the market, doing things like this podcast where we can reach out to our clients and say, look, this is what's coming up. This is what the pandemic's done. This is the impact it's had. And this is what's going to happen in the future. Right on, man. Yeah. And we're going to put all the their contact information is going to be in the show notes. So if you're watching this on your on the podcast app, on your phone, go to the show notes, get the contact information there. Or if you're looking at this on my YouTube channel, go to the video description and we're going to link it up there as well. So you guys can connect with these folks. So let me ask you this, Ben Ross, you, whoever wants to take this one, but if I'm a decision maker at a dealership, right? I have my, my you know, different companies that I can connect with. Why would I choose you guys? What do you guys do? That's yeah, of course. Uh, we, we're we not a job board. We're not Indeed. We're not here just to, to chuck you a candidate and hope they stick and, and get paid for it. We're there to work with you guys for the next five, 10 years. Uh, we, we we want to add value to you. We, we cover our candidates generally in the US for six months. So if they don't work out for six months, you get a refund on it. So there's no no risk in using us. So what we come in and do is we get to know what, what you guys do as a business, how you guys work, what sort of person you want, because a technician or a sales consultant that's right for one company is not going to be right for someone else. Um, so we really get to know the companies we work with. We don't work with everyone. We don't want to work with everyone. But the people that we work with, we spend a lot of time getting to know them at the start. And we work on repeat business, so we get to know exactly what they're looking for. We go to market, and we don't we don't find candidates on the market and then try and get them into companies. We go to market with roles from companies and find them the right fitting candidates. Um, so yeah, we're not just a, a churn of candidates. We're we're taking your brand to market, and we're finding you the right people. And from a candidate's point of view, we're not going to put you forward to a role that's not right for you because you're, if, if you're only going to be there for three or four months, it doesn't benefit you or us. So we're trying to find you the absolute right job. There you have it, folks. So if you're looking for a partner, um, somebody to help you recruit within your stores, uh, definitely check these, check these guys out. Um, again, information in the show notes or in the video description. And um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful you guys were able to join today i know there's some uh, you know uh distance between us and it's it's uh the connection sometimes isn't the best but um uh, i think we got some some good value out of this conversation and i'm hoping that you guys can connect with some folks here through through this effort um there is a question that i ask everybody that comes on the show and that question is where do you see the automotive industry headed in the next five years and why where do I see it in the next five years? I think the last six months has probably given us a glimpse into where it is going to be in the next five years. Uh, I think you're going to get probably 80% of things done online. Uh, I think you're probably going to have less people uh, actually working in dealerships and more people working at home. Uh, I think the the back office structure is going to change an awful lot. Um, I think you're still going to have the same requirement on the technician side of things, uh, but the sales consultant, the sales manager's roles are going to change dramatically. Um, and I think... Yeah, the, the last six months with video interviewing, with uh, the way people buy cars, the way people search for cars. I think if you look at uh, Tesla as a great example, 80% of that is done online. I think most brands and dealerships are going to go down that route over the next three, four, five years. Right on, man. Um, Ross, let's see if we can get you, let's see if we can get some audio here. Um, what about... Uh, so same question, but let's let's apply it to recruiting, especially here in the U.S. What do you see in the next five years? How are things going to change? Um, I see people, people like us, our services, um, because they're getting tougher to recruit and to get out to the right talent. So I think to use someone like us who can really help you and um, build relationships with you and your staff and your your companies i think that's the way we sit with it going because although yes the job boards that of course we, we liaise with and work with um 
you know, back to the personal touch and to speak to someone to gain relationships with teams of recruiters and headhunters. Um, that's how I see it going. I think, you know, clients will look at that and definitely in these tough times will need the right staff in their teams um, to build upon. Right on, man. There it is, folks. There you have it. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for doing this. I really appreciate it. Hey, by the way, what time is it over there, man? It is 10 to 11 p.m. Wow, man. So, dude, that's dope. Yeah. Thank you so much. For, thanks for staying up late to do this. I appreciate it. Um, great conversation. That's all the time that we have. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as usual, we'll talk later. We only host the well respected. The vendor Lexus Nexus. We don't sell digital marketing. What you do? We inspected with our DT vendor management solutions. We come in like the EPA to clear out the pollution. Save the trash. Go keep your P and L clean. Your inventory. From product pitches, meetings, to cost negotiations, your vendors have you swamped. You have cars to sell, but most of your time goes in managing your vendor relationships. Wouldn't it help to have someone navigate the way ahead? Enter Dealer Talk Vendor Management Solutions. A filter between you and your vendor so you only have to deal with what's most important. We inspect your digital data to get optimum results for your money. Here's what we do. Give you an accurate idea of what's working and what's not for every digital service. Get vendors to submit monthly highlights, lowlights, and recommendations. Sift through their data to give you those metrics that matter. Evaluate all package, content, or cost changes and product pitches. Do monthly marketing budget analysis to ensure better ROIs. Finally, we give you concise reports and monthly videos with actionable insights. Now, you can focus on what really matters, selling cars. Contact us today and your first 30 days are free. Let's build your business together.